speculate without this intro. Kick it, baby. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. It's the <laughs> speculation zone we go. All right. So, yes, welcome to the speculation zone officially. So, as we said, already already done a few, already kind of started the pre-roll to it. But now we are fully in and on board. Again, the question of our, of course, spring stock is really what is prominent here because we might have another hub at play. And as I just said a second ago, uh, reporting by Tony Paul of the Detroit News, he's a staff writer there, uh, made the initial write up about the USFL's interest over in Detroit. Um, He now writes, and this is the title of it, USFL explores Metro Detroit hub for 2023. Eastern Michigan has been contacted. So what does this all mean? So first, the Eastern Michigan part. Um, By Eastern Michigan, he's referring to Eastern Michigan University, the the Mid American Conference School up in Yippalanti, forty minutes outside of Metro Detroit. Um, the article has a ton of stuff talking about the at least hit to his sources' knowledge, one that he cannot disclose. Um, what they are discussing in the Detroit area. Again, this is all based on the source he's talking to. There's nothing official from the league, but this is all according to Tony mm-hmm. Paul. So. First things first, they are looking at Detroit as a hub option. They are exploring that heavily right now. And this has been talked about for over for pretty much a year. They they Detroit's been on the radar ever since their social media following blew up in the beginning of the of 2021. Um, they are very much wanting to go out there. Um there's been two options now. According to this article, you have two different stadium options the league's looking at. One seems to be more of the favorite right now, but the other is still at play. Um, we knew about Ford mm-hmm. field. That was the initial talk that Ford field would be at play, uh, for a potential hub. That is currently one of the USFL's stadiums that's on the radar. It's in downtown Detroit. It's right across from tiger state from tiger stadium. It makes a lot of sense. If you want to go right there thing is it's a busy concert venue during the summer and spring. So, and probably you have to think about stadium. Rental oh yeah. It's not well. cheap. That is not going to be a cheap one. Detroit is a busy, I mean, think about this. Detroit might be not a big player in terms of what you think of Detroit today, mm-hmm. but in terms of a media market, it's kind of a big media market if you look into it. Uh, it's top 15. I remember if it's top 15, at the very least it's top 10, if I'm remembering the order right from my last time checking out the media sizes. Um, so if they can get the Metro Detroit, that would be a massive win for the league if they do it where it's fiscal for mm-hmm. them and makes sense. If not, here's the one that has been, in some circles that we've talked, in some community circles we've talked, well, maybe this is a secondary option. Not sure if they would fully go here, but according to Tony Paul, this seems to be kind of the one that has the most steam behind it is going to Eastern Michigan University, playing at Reinerson Stadium, which is known as the factory out there. Uh, and that's, again, 40 mile. It's a 40 minute drive out from detroit it's still in the it's still in the suburban it's metro area. detroit it's, it's metro like, detroit is huge and ipsy hey you know what there's a lot worse places than ipsy ypsilanti is a not too bad and i'll tell you great pizza out there good times e- em what that makes me want oh go. yeah oh you know, to detroit stop have you ever had buddy's pizza no Ooh. i've not had buddy's pizza Sign us no. up. I can't, this is why we almost have to do spring stuff if if if, if we're in the speculation if it zone. is the if it is the case, I, I, I'm not saying it's yet at the, you know, at the stage where it was a week ago with Memphis, where it's like, oh my God, there's so much smoke that there's got to be a fire under there somewhere, you know, like about to blow up. This is more of like, okay, there's a lot surrounding it. We just need to get the final pieces in order if this is the case. Um, now, Reinerson Field, some things you want to mention here. It it, it holds about 30,000 fans in the stadium. Um, they had spent a few million recently to upgrade locker and facilities over there. Um, interesting part as well. It is designed as a dual purpose stadium and the fact that it has a track and field surrounding it. Um, it also is a gray field. Um, the turf is to match one of the secondary colors of Eastern Michigan. Uh, so that would be a little caveat to playing there if you did. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas, of course, again, the benefits of Ford Field, you're downtown, it's a standard turf field, which is something that's specified in this article, by the way. They want a turf field, something that can hold up to the weather conditions, because think about this, Birmingham and Memphis, southern weather, it's a little warmer, yeah, there's going to be some rain, but you don't have you don't have a potential threat of, say, snow in April. Mm-hmm. Michigan, oh, yeah. 
it still is there. It's not as bad as say if you played in February and mm-hmm. March, but trust me from you living oh, up yeah. there and from me living up near Chicago, snow still can be a thing in April. I've seen it so snow in May. Want, so. Yeah. I mean, you still want to have stable field conditions and it doesn't look sloppy mm-hmm. um, because not only does it, you don't want it to look sloppy in terms of play. You don't want it to look sloppy on television as well. And the fans there as well that are coming out there, you which know? is probably the biggest benefit. Sorry, sorry, Zach, to cut you off, but no, that's no. probably the biggest I, I, benefit. I think... If you can swing a Ford field, you don't have to worry about the weather at all. And I mean, for mm-hmm. fans sake, yeah, they're probably going to want to, in some of those April days, it's a chilly boy up there, man. That lake effect well, will kill you. Well, that's probably why if they, if indeed, like I said, they are, if these reports are indeed the case, which I'm, I'm going to say that, you know, I mean, Detroit news has been on top of this whole storyline for a mm-hmm. while now. So there there's, I think there might be smoke there. Um, look, Metro Detroit, like if you can get it in downtown and get it to where you are getting the fee you want and you are not going crazy with overspending, which again, you know, you add on a stadium, you're adding on a lot of ad- additional costs. That's why they're doing these hubs. They want to do it to where it's slow growth to where they can improve their product, get the funding. And then it's not worrying about going into the red instantly like other leagues of the past have or like what the XFL is going to have to worry mm-hmm. about. So, you know, this is where this comes into play. It's balancing your cost. Do you, it, a cost benefit analysis, if you will. Okay, I'm spending this much. Will being in Metro Detroit be worth that price tag per game to play in, in Ford mm-hmm. Field? Survey says, to me, if you get the right deal, you go to Ford Field because you're in downtown. Right. You might as well go in the heart of the city where all the sports teams play. If you can't get the right deal, Ypsilanti ain't too bad. Like you said, it's Metro Detroit. Mm-hmm. It, it still is that. And it's East, Eastern Michigan. It doesn't have too bad of a setup. It also is a turf field. So sure. it all would work out. But to me, if I'm doing this, if the USFL has any chance of getting Ford Field for a reasonable price that seems to fit Fox's mm-hmm. budget, you don't even bother with looking at EMU. You go straight over there. But right now, I'm assuming the university price point still looks a bit better. They're just trying to maybe, if I'm guessing, and if this is the case, they want to cover their base and say, are you sure? Well, you know, let me throw another little speculation zone inside of a speculation zone out there. Birmingham is a great example of this. Yes, mm-hmm. protective stadium. They were home for most of the games. But you know what? They had some overlap with the world game set up and some other things. And so then they played out of Legion Field. Mm-hmm. What if this is to shore up the the OSP, as I always call it, the oh shit plan, right? Ford Field, they're booked on a weekend. You can't solve your schedule and move things around to where you, you need that stadium that day. Hey, you know mm-hmm. what? You have Reinerson 40 minutes down the way. And maybe you play one or two of your games out of another field instead of Ford Field. But If you can get those to the late end of your season and keep the early season in Ford field speculation zone, everyone, but then you save yourself from that colder weather. Cause I'll say if you can get into like early May, mid May, you're still, you're going to be dealing with some decent weather. You might get some rain, but you're going to get, I mean, Birmingham, you're going to get rain. Memphis, you're going to get rain. You're going to get rain, whether it's spring, fall, summer in some of these places. Michigan, especially because it's surrounded by water. I mean, mm-hmm. snow and rain. It's the lake effect. But maybe, maybe that's what we're seeing in play here is we're going to see maybe a majority in Ford Field, but they need to have that backup. Maybe there's an Elton John playing or Mr. Worldwide. We talked about him before. Maybe he's out Taylor, there. Taylor Swift. Oh, I there mean, you go. Talk about Talk about someone in the news right now for the ticket prices. Well, maybe, and and you, you know what? Are maybe Colin Coward's touring, and he's booked up maybe Colin the Herd Live is at Ford Field, and they just they cannot move that date, and so they're going to have to go live. play at Reinerson Field. You know, Maybe, maybe, who knows? I feel, I feel like that would be such a risk if you did like his hot takes in a live room. Just have like, I mean. That's why they should do it. That's why they should Herd, do it. Herd, hire me. I'll get you. Ever, talk, talk to talk to Eric Shanks. He'll, he'll, he'll send he'll send a DM to Colin. You can you can link up with yeah, them. Have his people call my people. <laughs> I'll, I'll mm-hmm. give him the what for. I, I I don't think that is a that is out. Of, I don't think that should be fully out of the cards if you're exploring Detroit. Um, if you can make it work, um, 
I think what I think though in the other regard of finding one stadium, um, to me having just a single solid location, not having any confusion locally, mm-hmm. is also helping. Unlike with protect, unlike with protective versus Legion, I mean, yeah, they were across town, but Ypsilanti is still sure. forty minutes. Sure, sure. Um, and if you live closer to downtown and you're a fan and saying, all right, we're going out to EMU. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, some of those people might say, okay, I ain't going this week. And then, you know, NBC goes back and looks at Fox and goes, well, wait a minute. What do you, we wanted the fans right, this right, year, right. you know, which that is the, I think that's part of why you're saying, okay, one location, because a, what do fans mm-hmm. think? I want consistency. I want facts and details to what I'm going to. I don't want to be shoved around any extra steps that I have to take makes me a little can make it a little more irritating to do this or less enthusiastic about doing something Mm -hmm. is how i see it so i think the most direct is picking one if you are going to do that um both options are have their own benefits i have no problem with either i personally just hope it's metro detroit though because i think ford field would be it would be a massive win if they could play in Ford. Field, well, and I think, I, well, I and I'll say this: I think it'll be a lot easier for people to get there because it's right on Woodward. I mean, it's so. Mm-hmm. Easy. I mean, all you got to do, you drive down Woodward, you take that, a bus that, down that Woodward, a, everything drives right there. I've been to my share of Lions games as a Bears fan, um, and I, I mean, my uncle and aunt live out there in Novi. It's a, I mean, that area in you know the sports complex mm-hmm. area there it's a really nice spot. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, I mean, it's not as, it's not as open as say what uptown was when we went there for Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 there's, there's more skyscrapers and like other things, but there's stuff to do around it. You know, restaurants, Rick town, baby. To out. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm hoping I'm like, if you like get that same atmosphere, mm-hmm. you know, much even like Memphis, think about Memphis, Tennessee. It's the same deal. You know, you have all these different venues you can go to to hang out and talk football or watch the game. You know, it's why I'm hoping that's the case. Reinerson, I think, would be great if you if you have to get a secondary option. It's not a bad secondary mm-hmm. option, and if it's the one that makes the most sense to where they aren't killing themselves with like fees per game, fine. I really badly want Ford Field to be the thing, though. That is, if they don't get it, whatever. Mm-hmm. If they do get it, I'm freaking ecstatic, and I'm going to as many games there as possible. Oh sure. <laughs> so, I, I, and you know what? I'm not joking. My parents live in Illinois. It's you know, it's a five six hour drive, which actually I'm doing next Tuesday. I'm going up to Frankenmuth, baby. Look at Ooh. you, Frankenmuth. Frankenmuth and Bronner's Christmas Village. I am mm. hype, and you know, I fly in. I fly into Chicago on Sunday. There's a White Castle right outside of O'Hare Airport. It's already my first stop, and I saw. They have little waffle breakfast sandwiches now. They do. I got to get signed up on that. But sorry, we're still in the speculation zone. Oh, they. But no, it's fine. They. I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you those waffle sandwiches. I've had. I did try one for the first time about a month ago. They're oh. worth it. It's 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 everything you imagine. It's it's a McGriddle, but let better. me ask you this. So I saw, and I've actually known about this for a while. They have the classic White Castle burgers with the like lettuce mm-hmm. and tomato, like a whole thing. Have you tried one of those yet? Are yeah, good? it's uh, it's a higher quality slider. Oh, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. it. It better better quality beef. You get tomato, lettuce, and cheese. You should oh, try it. I'm definitely. Ooh, definitely try it. I'm so amped about some White <laughs> Castle. I told my boss that the other day. I was like, "Good news." She thought it was something about work. She's like, "What's up?" I said, "I'm gonna. Be, I, I get to eat White Castle on Sunday." <laughs> She's like, "What? Look, the fuck hey, are you look, talking if, about?" And oh. if, Detroit, if and when Detroit is a hub, we can go and possibly if we pick Springstock there, you know we get to then have one of those. Cel- like, look, when we were over in mm-hmm. Birmingham, we celebrated our last night with Christmas we, Easter night. Which was, <laughs> which was, which was, yeah, was just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Easter. Solid Easter <laughs> choice. But, you know, imagine us grabbing a crave oh. case of 20 after, after an excellent broadcast and watching the Panthers probably win against whoever the heck they're playing. I'm saying that with full. So let me, let Jeff me Fisher turns it around this year, by the way, let me correct you real quick. <laughs> 20 pack is a crave clutch a crave case that's a 30 pack but you're right wow we're getting a crave case buddy and i'm and i'm the one that lives in the area with white cases. i only is remember it because crave clutch sounds so funny all i think of is like a my wife's perch like her clutch you know and i think that's what I, anyway <laughs> i see anyway anyway i see i see so one last thing that came out of this write-up and it's it's funny i've had other people say this too there's been a lot of stuff well we're doing three hubs and sticking or is it still a chance there's four mm. 
And I've heard both ways. Some there's folks that are saying it's definitely three. If, if, and when Detroit is announced, if that is the case, you mm-hmm. know, but Tony, yeah, Tony Paul here, you know, again, these are his sources, but he's saying, and this isn't the first person I've heard this from Same either, here, by the yeah. way, that four hubs is definitely still on the table. It's at least a possibility. Um, Seemingly. It at least is, it is, again, all we've been told by the league, you know, all options are on the table. So I'm like, all right, that's fair. Mm. Um, but this, I mean, he goes as far to even go beyond just like the fourth. He's like, he, he even says in his article here, and I'm going to read off the exact sentence, uh, quote, if there is one more hub, whether it's Detroit or Philadelphia, oh, 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 oh there yeah, it is. There yeah. it is. The, that hub would likely host three or four of the league's eight teams based on team geography. The U.S. fails to decline to comment on future sites. Um, the US, and then here's another sentence. The U.S. Fell continues to explore options for at least one more hub, possibly two. So, yeah, I know I read that first sentence off. It was actually after sure. that second one I told you, but I digress. They are still looking at four as an option. Um, Philadelphia, mm-hmm. which has been rumored as a potential hub site, is still at play as well. Uh, as the league is gone, if they, and as you may have seen with Memphis, the best possible uh, situation is what they are mm-hmm. wanting. So Detroit though, I mean, that's been so he- it has been heavily rumored for over a year. I think they really badly just want to be there. If I am speculating hard on this, they see the metrics, they go, we got to get out there. Even though we had a, you know, we, even though we had a two and a two and eight roster last year, people like Jeff Fisher still, right. They like the swagger the guy brings. People want to see the Panthers. They are a legacy USFL team. They can lean heavy oh, now yeah. into the legacy of the Pan- Panthers. Look, the last professional football team to win a championship in the state of Michigan I know. were the Panthers. I know. And here's the thing. If the Pan- if the Panthers can turn this season around and they play in Detroit, people are showing up to that game. I mean, people go to the Lions game still, Zach. And I'll reiterate, one playoff win, one playoff win, one playoff win in my almost 39 years of living, Zach. One, 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 Ooh, Zach. Yeah. One playoff win. One. All we need to do if the Panthers play and like just football, win football games. Not, well, it's, <laughs> Zachy boy, speaking of uh, football games, Bears and the Lions played last week. Who won that one again? I, you don't got I, I, you two know, weeks in a row. This know. is what the lions do. They come in. I think I talked about this. They come in kind of hot. They don't even come in hot. They, they almost win games in the beginning of the season where people are like, Oh boy, these lions are good. They're only losing by three. I'm like, but no, 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 they're losing. And then they start playing really poorly. And everybody's like, well, ah, there's the lions again, but then they beat the Packers. Then they beat the bears and all is right in the world. Now the bears, you know what? I kind of, I don't hate the bears because I feel like you and I, you know, we're the NFC North. We always, there's one team FTP. That one felt good. FTP baby. baby. I'll even take a worse draft pick. If we can beat the Packers twice this year, you know what? Sign us up, sign us up. And you know what? The Rams are serving us up a pretty nice pick as well. So next year, we're going to have really great picks and you want to know the outcome, Zach? They're going to suck. They're going to be the lions. That's what they do. <laughs> so the Panthers have a good opportunity here. If they can, if they can turn things around and I'll tell you near the end of the year, the Panthers were one of those teams that their record, the way they played and the, the what their record was, didn't, they didn't really correlate. You they, know what I mean? They were, they were scrappy in so many losses. I mean, that's one of the cases where I'm just like, dude, if you can put a few pieces together, I mean, it sounds like their quarterback room is coming back for the yeah. most part. You know, they, I mean, it wasn't fully written up by the league, but Josh Love, you know, is there. It sounds like, I mean, there's been nothing on Paxton Lynch, but I'm assuming that they are wanting Paxton, Eric Berrier, according to at least the USFL contracting setup, mm-hmm. he should at least still be there. And he has some solid flashes against the generals. So, they're on the fence. Look, if you get a hub and you get a winning team out there in Detroit this season, you know, say the per- perfect case scenario, say you have three hubs 
and and this is just in terms of league exposure and like fans getting rooted. I'm not saying if you're a fan of like the Gamblers or of the Breakers, you lose and big and you go and have a poor year that that's good. But say you have the three hub cities, all of them winning records, all get playoff mm-hmm. runs. If you're the league officer going, hell oh, yes. yeah. Why? Why are you like this? Because, A, the Stallions just won a championship. So that, that city already is like, yep, we're sold. We're yep. back. Skip won a championship for us. We, we can hold that one till the day we die. Uh, the Showboats. Um, first year there, holy crud, we have a playoff berth. We have a good mm-hmm. team. Oh, yeah. Good teams bring in fans. They bring in more in-gate revenue because of the fact you want to see them mm-hmm. play. So there's that. Michigan, well, it's Jeff Fisher. And if he leads a playoff team and it's in Detroit that needs a win, in my opinion, in its football lineage. Well, and here's the thing, too. Why Think not? about the competition that the USFL will have in Detroit, right? So, you know, clearly they're not going to be competing with the NFL because that season is going to be over. No. But no, when no. it comes to the NBA and the NHL, I hate to be that guy, but I have a feeling those two teams aren't going to be making the postseason. I don't know. Maybe call it a hunch that the Wings and the Pistons. You know, here's the thing, Zach. I went and bought the NBA. Oh, bless you. I went and bought. Yeah, thanks. I went and bought the uh, the NBA league pass. I canceled it after the first week. Okay. I said I can't. I cannot put myself through this as a Pistons fan. The first game we won. Oh, great. Yeah. No. Nah, no. Nah, can't do it to myself. Too much stress to be doing that. But I mean, it gives again the Panthers another opportunity. You have a winning team. Detroit has no winning teams. Tigers aren't good. Pistons aren't good. I mean, Lions, clearly, they're not good. You know what? Panthers, if they come in hot, they win the first two games. I think that's enough to draw some people in. Time to shine. I'm telling you, man, it's, you know, what's a great story as well uh, that I could see the league using, by the way, and my favorite player in the league, um, at least the one I rep on my jersey I got from Loyal Retro's, Terry Myrick. You know where Terry Myrick played? Hmm. You, know, you know where he played in college? Oh, Eastern oh, Michigan. Oh, well, sign him up. Returning home, possibly. Welcome home if you go back to Ryerson. Yeah. <laughs> the very nice. You know, that's got that would be pretty cool for him then if they do play there. Because think about that, right? Like, returning, but in a professional setting, right? So sign him up there. <laughs> saying. Saying. He's going to the factory. Again, it's called the factory, mm-hmm. so... If you, if you go to Ryan gray field, like I, I don't said, know if we talked about, did we talk about the gray field? Uh, we mentioned it. I mean, I, I don't know if people, actually, I wonder if how many people would say something about the gray field. I think it's cool. Being there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. nice. It's a college football thing to have the colored field turf sure. and all that, you know, it ain't no Boise state with the yeah. blue gray is pretty neutral. I, I think if you had like, I think if you played in Idaho and you said, Oh, our hubs, uh, Boise, oh yeah, that'd be oh, rough. Got it with the blue. I think it'd be like, Ooh, <laughs> all right. Unless you came up with the you change some team colors to make it work. But yeah, that one's my goodness. Um, but a lot, I mean, I, I don't know. Did we speculate about everything? I think we might have, I don't know. Uh, pretty, I mean, pretty much, you know, I mean, the, I mean, like I said, Fred Smith, we kind of talked oh, yeah. pre- just as leading in, but I, I mean, pretty much look, if you're, if you're one to follow along with this whole hub, story i mean clearly the league is starting to lay down its tracks it's already laid down two mm-hmm. of them um it's possibly going to lay down one to two more but i mean if we're speculating hard as all as all lord without even saying anything's confirmed with from the league's view they it sounds like they want to be in detroit michigan mm-hmm. i don't knock them yep. for wanting to be in detroit michigan because to me you have an opportunity to jump jump in while you got the things. I mean, you talk about the Pistons. I mean, their last I checked, there's three and eleven, and their star, their, Kate Cunningham, is out for long term for an injury. Yeah, you know that's true. That's just for this year, by the way. I mean, that could change. But if you're looking at the sports scene for them right now, if they go to Detroit this coming season, mm-hmm. yeah, you get good. You you get you get a city rallying behind you. You get a playoff berth. From retooling, yep. you have Jeff Fisher on your roster as your head coach, who hopefully learned from last year's mistakes. I'm just telling you, <laughs> it all could go so well. There is a great scenario for Detroit for fans out there in Detroit, Michigan. You have a team that if they if they can find a few ways to win, that's a playoff team. I mean, that's two steps away from a championship berth. That is three steps away 
from having a football team to be proud of for the first time in God knows how long. Well, since 1983. No, not even since 1983, <laughs> since the 50s when they won their last championship before there was a Super Bowl, when weirdly enough we're tied for the most championships pre-Super Bowl era with the Browns, who also have no Super Bowl wins. I don't know what happened with that whole merger switchover, but something tells me. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate Bob, on Bobby, that one. Bobby Lane curse on you. Bobby Lane curse yeah, on your family. My God. <laughs> Bobby Lane curse on your dog. I need a Bobby Lane jersey is what I need. I feel like that's my life sometimes. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. I, I can't wait to see what comes out of this. Uh, there's so, like I said, it's the, fi the fire of it is starting to slowly grow, and that's one that, that one's got to be coming up here within the next month plus, I think. I don't know if we're going to see, like, I don't think in November you'll see two hub announcements. Mm -hmm. I think this one, I think, still has some kinks to work out if it is the sure, case. Sure, sure, sure. You know, and if Philadelphia is the case, there's a little more groundwork, I think, that's at play. I mean, you heard about Memphis alone took six months yeah. to get that whole deal done. I'm assuming, I mean, Detroit's been over, those initial discussions started back in, it was like early 2021. Mm -hmm like well before the first season oh, yeah. kicked off in April. So that has clearly been a while. They want to do that one right, if that is the case. For sure. If this is the case. Again, speculative is the case. I want to put that out there <laughs> and make sure you guys are aware. The league didn't say anything. This is what the news is reporting from Detroit. Keep that in mind. Hopefully one of these days, hopefully one of these days soon, we'll be able to talk about it on the show in an official capacity. So, you know, always state this way. You need to be checking out the show. Even if there isn't big news, we get to speculate on some of these things. And, hey, it's usually a 50-50, sometimes more than 50-50. I feel like we uh -huh. talked about the three hubs being a scenario. People laughed at me back then. Now it's coming close to where it might be a reality. Yeah, the cities were all wrong. Well, other than Birmingham that I talked about, yeah, but yeah. you know what? We might have a third hub. It might be three hubs, it might be four following, you know, we, we heard last year, let one hub up to two to four this year. Well, if they hit three, they're on track. If they hit four, then they did what they, they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Then we get to see season three and see where the expansion relocations, renamings, whatever. I don't know. All things are on the table. It feels like, and that uh, it feels fun. Feel fun to keep every, uh, keep track of every option. Every option's present. And again, as the league's told us, everything's, as you've said, you basically said what they said to us. Everything's on yep, the table. Yep, yep, That is That is how they are approaching this. The best possible scenario to get a second year and to show that they are going to be here for to stay moving forward.